All right, let's get this party started. Going live on Instagram. All right. I'm blurry. Anna, I wasn't sure if you were coming on as Never Without a Book or if you were coming on as Diverse Classics. There, I see you now. <laughs> I was just saying, Anna, I didn't know if you were coming on as uh, Diverse Classics or Go Live. Welcome everybody. Just waiting for Anna. If you guys have Instagram, go live over there. Anna's gonna jump on with us. Hey. Hey. I was just I saw you pop on as Never Without a Book, and I was like, I wonder if she's gonna pop on with that name or Diverse Classics. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Just um waiting for some people to come on. For those of you who are popping on we are discussing the women of brewster place um by gloria naylor loved 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 this book um was so glad because i've been up and down with selecting this as a book of the month and so when i saw anna do it for diverse classics i was going back and forth between two books and i was like eh, because i wanted to do this at some point i was like you know what there's no but i literally what two days before i needed to post the announcement yeah. i think i decided <laughs> Okay, I'm going to order it from Amazon and join you guys um, in on this read because, as always, we love having you on here to discuss books with us. Um, no problem. So, hey, hey, I'm just trying to see who's on. Love that shirt. I guess that's mine. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what people can see, I guess, because uh, our screens are split now. Okay. Um, Jamie, love the hair. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. I see Dawn on there. Hey, hey. Okay. Um, like I said, for those of you who are, I'm going live in two places. So I'm live on IG with Anna and I'm also live in our Facebook group. Um, for those of you, you probably will be able to hear Anna, but you maybe won't be able to see her um, on Facebook. So if you have Instagram, jump on there and you can actually see her face and not just hear her. Um, anyways, so we're going to talk about the women of Brewster Place. Um, when did, I can't, I need to go look when, when this even came out. Um, I want to say it's the 80s. Let's see. It won the National Book Award in 1983. So obviously it had to have come out before then, but yeah, I know this is a classic. Um, but yeah, I love going back and reading these types of books like published Okay, by Penguin Group, but when? I'm trying to find the date. Bum, bum, bum. Anyways, that's not important. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure what to really expect. The only thing I knew is that it was based on the lives of seven women. And um, little did I know that it was going to be this dramatic. I didn't know. I honestly yeah. didn't know where it was going to go. Um, and I kind of like... I literally have pages and pages and pages of notes on each character like I had to stop after each chapter I sat there and like I don't know you guys won't even be able to see that but like literally after each character I sat there and wrote notes because there was so much in the details of their lives and their little stories and how I felt after reading them that I just I didn't want to forget anything when we came on this chat so it was so important for me to capture all of that um so I guess we can start with well, the first story is kind of an introduction. Yeah, it's Maddie's. Okay. And you, have you seen the movie? Mm -mm. You haven't? Okay. No, I yes. rented it on Amazon last week, I think. Okay. So Maddie Michael is played by Oprah Winfrey. Wasn't expecting uh, that. I don't know. I guess in my head, I was thinking of someone younger for Maddie Michael. I don't, I don't know. I always just, I don't know. I always see, especially the way that... Oprah was kind of dressed and the way she looked, it reminded me of um, Miss Sophia on The Color Purple. So it was like <laughs> reminiscent of that. Um, so Maddie's story, um, you know, she's a young, innocent girl kind of protected by her parents. 
she lives with them, um, doesn't get out much. And so then this guy, Butch, comes and just, you know, he's a flirt. Like he comes and starts messing with her, messing with her head and convinces her to like, come take this walk. What were they trying to get? Sugar cane yeah, um, from the field? Yeah. So he convinces her to to go get sugar cane in the field and he's just basically talking sweet nothings. Of course. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and convinces her to go over into the basil fields after that, and they're sitting there resting, and um, yeah, they eventually get down to the nitty gritty, and turns out, well, she's pregnant. She's pregnant. Yep, and so she came, she comes home. Well, I guess she's her mom already kind of knew her. She told her mom, but then it was kind of time to tell the dad. And the dad's like, well, who's who's the father? Because he's thinking, oh, it could only be one person. This person that's perfect for my daughter that we've been trying to match her up with. It's got to be him. No worries. We'll take care of it. Like, we'll get y'all together and married, whatever. And he was like, well, tell me who the father is. And she absolutely just refuses. Because a part of her is extremely embarrassed that she allowed herself to get pregnant by Butch. Um, because, you know, he's kind of like the the town pimp. I guess, I don't know. He's a womanizer is the word I'm looking Pretty for. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he ends up, she ends up not telling him. And in, a, in res, as a result of that, her dad ends up like beating her ass <laughs> um, to the point where the mother finally has to stand, to stand up to him. And I don't know in the book, did she have a shotgun when she was stopping him from hitting her? Cause in the movie, she has a shotgun and she's like, bam, bam, like, get off my daughter <laughs> or I'm going to put a hole through your head. Um, so I couldn't remember. I remember the mom stepping in to stop it, but I don't remember if she had a shotgun in the right. in the book. But yeah, anyhow, the mom stops it from happening um, and she ends up leaving. Like, she's like, I'm out of here. I don't need this. I'm going to take care of my baby and I'm out. I'm just going to stop for a second to see any comments because I know there's some stuff. Um, let me see. Rosa said on Facebook, she said, I told someone I was reading the book and they said they loved the movie. I didn't even know there was a movie. I tried to find it, but it's not on Netflix. So, yeah. Um, she, okay. I got you. Someone's saying she she did have a shotgun. Okay. Um the movie you can actually get on Amazon. I think I paid three ninety nine for like a forty eight hour rental because I couldn't find it on any other source. Like literally, uh, Amazon was the only place that I could find the movie. So you can rent it there. Um, it's kind of the way Amazon has it as is a movie um, that's like almost three hours long, I think. But when it came out originally, it was a mini series. So I don't know what it aired on or when it aired on TV or whatever, but it was like a four part mini series the way it happened. So anyways, I'm going to, we're going to talk, we're talking about Maddie Michael. So if you guys want to shoot out your thoughts about her, um, go ahead and do that. Um, cause she's kind of like the center of it all. Like, you know what I mean? She's the, right. the, the glue, she kicks off, she kicks it off for us. Uh, well, there actually, there's another character, Dawn, which you don't really remember because she, basically goes back and tells about Brewster Place itself and what it was right. before these women moved in. Um, but the first major story is Maddie Michael. Um, so I was at the point where she's leaving and she gets her own apartment um, with her son, taking care of this baby by herself. Um, and then the incident happens. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so the baby is drinking a bottle. They both fall asleep. The bottle, the way it's described, I think in the book is the bottle falls on the floor. The rat senses it, goes for it, starts drinking from it. Then as it's described as it smells the sweet milk around the baby's, baby. yep, yeah, the face, it goes into the bed and bites the baby in the cheek. Yeah. So at that point, Maddie is... She eventually takes the baby to the doctor, gets the baby fixed, but she's absolutely disgusted at the conditions that she lives in. Um, yeah, I Rosa said I would totally die. I would die. I would totally die too. I mean, yeah, if a rat, mm, yeah, I, I would have done the same thing that she was. Like, I'm out. Yeah, I like, I don't care. I have no money, no place to go, but I'm out. Like, 
this is, I'm not about that life. Like I'm not about to let my child live in these types of conditions. So, um, she's on this search, nowhere to go. One bag has no idea where she is, how to find what she, I mean, she just has no idea. She can't afford most places. Some places that have vacancy, they're denying her just simply because she's a black woman. So she's having a God awful time. Um, finding a place for herself and her baby to stay. And um, then um, she kind of is just lost, kind of standing there. And this lady is like, are you lost? Like, are you deaf? Can you hear me? Like, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and so the lady invites her into the house and offers her food. And it's just kind of like, oh, well, you can stay here for the night. Or your child can play with those toys. Those are my, my granddaughter's toys. Or, you know, she was just real sweet and just kind of, making it seem like it was temporary but she ends up opening her home i think they she lived there for like 30 something years yeah um yeah it was it was crazy so i want to talk about basil <laughs> basil obviously is super spoiled from from birth i mean she felt yes. like that was her blessing it was almost like a, a a possession of hers the way she treated him like it was like Nobody can touch Basil. Basil is innocent. Like, he can do no harm. Um, even as a grown adult, like, I don't know. There was just, it was weird. A weird kind of relationship that they had. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Basil needs a whooping. I, I completely agree yeah. with that comment. Like, he absolutely did need a whooping. Um, and then gets into trouble. So, your mother has worked so hard to, well, first of all, let's talk about the lady in the house. Because she then ends up passing away. Right. Um, and then the kids come and basically take all the stuff that they want. And she's able to buy the house from them. So this right. she's worked hard all her life from getting beat by her dad to basically coming up. Like, I have this. I own this house. I'm, I'm, it's mine. Um, it's fully paid for. Like, she's she's living pretty good now. She's worked hard to get where she is. And now... Basil goes to jail. Yeah. So he he's in a bar fight, right? And ends up yes. killing killing the guy that he gets in a fight with. Like it was an accident, but um ends up going to jail. Then she she posts bail for Basil. And um against, well, he told her not. Basically the lawyer advised her not to post bail. Not like too. the right. court court is in 2 weeks. Like I I mean he's he'll be okay for 2 weeks. Like He's a grown right. man. He'll be all right. Um, but she decides to go against the lawyer's advice. And yeah. And so Basil's at home. You know, he's in the movie. He's helping out. You know, he's he's so happy to have freedom that he's like lending a happy a helping hand to his mom. Like he's just doing whatever he can, fixing things, helping her in the kitchen, and then she gets a phone call with the court date. And it's like, even in the in the movie, you can see his face. It's just kind of like the reality of what's about to happen to him sinks in. And so he that's when he kind of has an oh shit moment and realizes that I'm about to go. I could possibly go to jail. Like this could be the end of my life. Um, yeah, so then... Um, he ends up taking, so he ends up dropping his mom off to work. And mind you, like she's put her house up as collateral for his bail. So if he doesn't show up, guess what happens? He doesn't show up. Her house gets taken from her. So again, she's left. This baby has caused more problems <laughs> than, it, you know, you want, you want your children to forever be your blessing. But it's like ever since she's had this baby or got impregnated, yeah. She, he's been one problem after another for her. Um, so he ends up dropping her off at work and he's like, see you later. I'm out. Like never to return again. She's even, she's just so naive. Like he doesn't pick her up from work and then she goes home and like fixes his favorite meal and she's sitting up all night waiting for him to come and he just simply does not return. Um, my heart was broken for her because as someone who's a single mom, like I work hard for the things that I'm able to provide my kids with for the home, you know, and it's like you work so hard for your kids and then for your kid to just like 
just like disregard you, you know what I mean? Like not think about what your mom is losing, what's at stake for her. That that just broke my heart. Like it was sad. So I was so mad when he took her car and left and didn't care that she was going to lose her home. Yeah. Yeah. Finally being a good son. Yeah, he was finally being a good son for like 2.5 seconds until he took her car. Never to be seen again. If I were her, I probably would have called 911 because <laughs> I'd been like, my car is missing, first of all, because you, yeah. you, you're going to go to jail no matter what now. Um, but yeah, that, that story was heartbreaking for me um, to see that her son had done that. So anyways, she has no place to go and she lands at Brewster Place. So I'm not sure of the timeline, but was she one of the first to move into Brewster Place after all of this happened? I believe so. Okay. Um, it was her first and then it came everybody else. Yep. Let's see. Um, yeah, she basically lived in one of my notes that I wrote was that Maddie lived her entire life for her son and she had nothing to show for it. Right. So sad. Yeah. He selfishly cared more for himself than anyone or anything. And that was kind of his attitude like throughout talking back to her as an adult like even as a kid he just yeah she allowed it though like I didn't understand why you know you give everything to your kid and they still end up like that I don't understand that I, know. I thought I felt like he would have more compassion for his mom because you know he was fatherless and it was just her and you know whatever mom says I'll do for her I'll take care of her the way she takes care of me but I don't know. She really spoiled him, but I just didn't. I don't know. In my head, I just didn't think that he would honestly go that far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Another comment is what struck me the most about her story was because she gave up her life. The lady who owns the house encouraged her to date, go out and do things, right. and and she would constantly make excuses. Oh, Basil needs this. I don't have time. Right. I have to go to church. This and that. Like she was just constantly making excuses as to why she couldn't do things. That part didn't make sense to me either, I mean, because she, I mean, her parents were good to her at one point in life before her dad attacked her, so mm -hmm. it's like, I don't understand why she felt the need to, like, super baby him. Right. But I felt like the whole rat thing traumatized her, and she had to protect him in every way possible at yeah. every moment of every day. It was just too much. And especially not having a father figure, she probably felt guilty, because she just, yeah. I don't even, she never told Butch, right? Like, he never knew that he fathered her child, so yeah. I think a part of her kind of felt this this guilt about, you know, not knowing his father, so um, yeah, her story was Probably one of my favorites. If I had to do like a top three, I think oh, Maddie Mays. Was, yeah. yeah. Hers was my favorite. Um, I think my next favorite was the lesbian couple. Uh, what is it? Lorraine and Teresa? Yes. Lorraine and Teresa. Yes. She, but she put her life in one person who ultimately let her down. But even after Basil left, she never seemed to start her life. Yeah, it was kind of like a woe is me pity party. Um, right. Even living in Brewster Place, the most excitement she had were the friendships that she made. Um, I think she sca was scared just because all of the relationships she's ever known have failed in some way, whether it's, you know, her parents, her son. It's been disappointment after disappointment. Um, the only true friend and person that really treated her kindly was the lady, and I can't even think of her name, but the lady that opened up her home, her home to her. Miss um, Eva. Yeah. Yep. Um. Sherry said Maddie's father did the same to her until he was disappointed when she got pregnant. Yep. Loved all of the stories so well told. I agree. All of the story. I was completely engrossed in each of these stories. Like I didn't want to stop. Maddie broke his heart. Yeah, his father, her father, and Etta. Yeah. Um, Etta May was another one. Um, who is that played by? I think Etta May is played by Jack A from 227. Really. That's who plays her in the, the yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, like, 
Yeah, she lives life skipping from town to town. Like she's she's on a hunt to see as many men as she could. She kind of goes in and out. Like she leaves. Like they're together, and then she leaves for a period, and then comes back. Um, and then the this story was heart wrenching too. So she brings her to so Maddie brings her to church, saying, "Why don't you come to church with me? Like instead of being in the streets looking for men." You can come to church and you find you a good man then. Um, so she goes, not really expecting. She's like, whatever, I'll go to church. And then there's this this pastor that's up there giving his sermon. And she's kind of like, well, who is this guy? You know. And that after the sermon, um, Maddie introduces them. They make small talk with him. And he's like, well, why don't you just come grab a cup of coffee with me? Um, and we'll go, we'll go. Um, hang out and so in her mind like she's like oh this guy has potential this is the one like finally like after all these men that I've been through that I'm finally going to be blessed with this this guy who's a church going you know guy he's he's a pastor like this is my break and then womp womp <laughs> it's the same old same old story he schmoozes her tell her what she likes to hear they end up sleeping together that same night um and mind you um maddie and etta actually get into a big fight right before she goes on this date and maddie's kind of like hold on now like be careful like i know in your head you're thinking this is a good guy but i can tell you outright like he only wants one thing at this point so i'm like right. she's throwing up those red flags trying to tell her friend like listen dude i'm trying to tell you like you need to slow your roll because this guy is no good and she's like whatever you're jealous like i finally have a good guy that's interested in me and you're you're just trying to hate right now that's basically what her attitude was like yeah. you're just trying to hate because a guy's finally interested in me and i'm going on this date and i'm gonna enjoy myself so in her head she's like oh yeah i'm gonna marry this man he's awesome like start a family i'm finally getting what i deserve and you know with that mindset she sleeps with him on the first date just hours later and basically he's like okay drops her off and that's that like thanks for not making yeah. this difficult like you you street women i don't know what he calls her you it wasn't modern day but it basically was like you street women or something he said like y'all understand it like you don't make it difficult for us to just part our ways like you know what it is and that's it and like she was absolutely crushed and she's like how do i walk back and she's standing in front of Brewster place or actually gets him to drop her off a few um feet away from the building so his car not to inconvenience him um and just ends up sitting there and she can hear that Maddie's playing her music her records and stuff like that and which was kind of a nice moment because it was Maddie's way of kind of saying I'm not mad at you like I still love you as a friend it was like I can't explain it, but she was just kind of like, I'm here for you no matter what. Even if we had this disagreement and you were wrong, I'm still here for you. You're still my girl kind of thing. Um, let me see. I thought it was so wise of Maddie to forgive her in advance. Yep. Hang on. And walk away. That took maturity. I'm not sure if I would have let Etta back into my life after that. Yeah. Oh, worldly. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, worldly women is what he called her. As I was like, I can't remember the term. Yes, that's exactly worldly. Um, Black Brit Reading is asking, have you, have you seen the film? I just watched it last week for the first time. I haven't seen it. Nope. Um, but it's it's pretty spot on to to the book. Um, but yeah, that, that, that story... <laughs> was different it was definitely um sad for for etta but at the end of the day it shows again how big of a heart that maddie has um right. maddie seems to put everybody else in their feeling that's just been an ongoing trend for her she always puts everybody else's feelings before her own um right. which is interesting so then the next character is Kiswana. She was kind of like our 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 righteous black girl magic empowerment type chick. 
um, who wanted to better Brewster Place. Um, and she had a she had a weird relationship with her mother. Um, I guess I guess her mother kind of turned her nose up at her because she's like, we're rich and this is where you've decided to live and, and start your own life. Like, what are you thinking about? Let's see, Jess said, I agree. This is one of the most consistent book to film adaptions I've ever seen. Yeah, it was pretty spot on with even the characters. Um, was it Cecily Tyson that played um, Kiswana's mom? Kiswana was Robin Givens. I'm, or was it, I always get Robin Givens and um, now my mind's going blank. I can look it up, okay. If y'all can, yeah, I think, right? Is Robin Givens the one, yeah, I don't know. Yes, everybody's saying yes. Okay, I had it right. I was like, I couldn't remember. Okay, yes. I probably would have done the same thing as Maddie. People say things in the heat of the moment. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, the trending theme of all of these women, and I was going to talk about this more to the end, was that they've all dealt with loss. They know what it feels like to lose. So um, sometimes because of that, you can be a little more forgiving of others. And sometimes it's just the opposite. <laughs> This all-star cast, gotta watch the movie now. Yeah, it's actually so, for me, it's hard to go back and watch stuff that was like, you know, filmed in like 1980, just because the quality of it is, <laughs> it actually wasn't that bad though, considering I've seen some worse movies. Um, yeah. But you know, you know how like, when you go back and watch like Martin replays, like it doesn't fit your flat screen. It's like just that square that's cut out. That's kind of how it was. Cause it's used to your, your old school TVs. Like that's exactly, I was watching a square on my flat screen TV. It was hilarious. But yes, um, you can rent it on Amazon for like $3.99. I had a 48 hour rental. It's probably a little close to three hours. So it's definitely worth the watch. Um, but it did have a good, good little cast. Yep. Yeah, Robin Givens. Um, it did have a good little cast. I enjoyed it. Um, so Kiswana was kind of one of my favorite characters. Well, I shouldn't say favorite, but I enjoyed her story too. Um, and another thing I'll say about this book is I loved how all of the stories kind of intertwined. Like all of the the right. women or a woman or two would appear in other stories. And, you know, these two are close friends and these two over here are close friends. So it was kind of neat to watch the dynamic of all of the women in other stories and how, what roles they play in these other stories. Um, no problem, Essence, welcome. Um, <laughs> you just made me feel so old. Why is that, Jamie? Hello, ladies. Hi, Antoine, whoever you are. Um, yeah, entertaining twining stories were my favorite. I thought that was really cool how they kind of tied all the women together in in the stories. Um, but Kiswana had basically she changed her name. I think it was Melanie. Um, so her mom just kind of like they had this beef. Like you've changed your name. You're trying to change your identity. Like her basically she was down for the people kind of thing now, and her mom was just kind of turning her nose up at her like you come from linden hills um this rich area like why are you ashamed of who you are and what your parents have worked so hard to bring you up at you know she was just kind of questioning that and even to the point of changing her name so that it was more african and i can't remember and i don't know if you remember the details of the story but her mom was basically like i named you melanie after my grandmother or my mother or something like that and then she started to tell the story which I can't remember for the life of me, but she started to tell the story of the grandmother and what she'd been through and why her name was so powerful and why she named her after that. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Mm -mm. I love the part where her mom told her, yeah, the origin of the name. I did, and I wish that I could remember. Yeah, it was like, I wish I could remember that. But, um, you know, she's basically saying, like, you're doing all of this, but... I ask questions basically you know what I mean before you yeah it was definitely her grandmother um but yeah her mom kind of broke it down like you know you're trying to be righteous um but here's 
you know, X, Y, and Z. So they were kind of like going head to head, you know, with their differences and things like that. And um, yeah, that was definitely an interesting story. What's the name of the book? It's The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. Doo -doo. Sorry, I know my ring light is bright sometimes, but... Um... And it basically follows the story of seven women um, that live in Brewster Place. So the next story, Luciella. Um, she's the one with the no good baby daddy, Eugene, <laughs> who I wanted to punch in the throat. Yes. Basically, I felt so bad. This story killed me, okay? Because, you know, she has a young baby. Eugene is an ain't shit dude. I'll say that. Um, yeah. Hold on. Let me read this comment before I go into the story. Yes. Reminds me of the way we try so hard to not be our moms, but we really don't understand how they came to be who they are. Totally agree. Yep. Um, so... Luciella um, is dating this guy named Eugene. Eugene pops in and out of the picture. Basically, her and Eugene have a child together. The child is probably like one less than, you know, yeah. 10, 11 months, something like that. The baby's just at, like at the crawling stages yeah. and able to sit up. So the baby's not, baby's not that old. Um, and so Eugene's coming in and out as a father. He's... You know, she's trying to give him one more chance. He's like, he's kind of out of his depression. He's on his feet. So, you know, who is it? She's telling Maddie. Again, Maddie in the center of everything. <laughs> Maddie, um, Maddie is, uh, someone said her, yeah, her story, story was gut-wrenching. So she's with Eugene. She gets pregnant with another child by him. And he's like just spazzing. Like, what am I going to do with another child? I can't afford to even feed what we have now. You know, he's basically he's all about selfishly trying to get his life back. Um, he's all about me, 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 me. Um, and she's just like, well, you know, maybe if I abort this baby, it will keep him around. It'll be less stress. And then we can make this thing work. Right? right okay no problem so she ends up she ends up going to have an abortion well she comes home i don't even know this might have been days later whatever she i don't even think she told him that she had an abortion at that point right so he comes home and he's basically starts packing his stuff and he's like i'm moving to i don't know he said something like maine and then he's packing his clothes and he's like i'm gonna send for y'all once i get settled right right and she's like well why can't i just come with you we'll figure it out like uh, let me just come with you and he's like no 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 I'm going to such and such place but it wasn't where he originally said he was going she's like wait a minute like what are you talking about like you just said this other place well what I meant was blah 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 um oh someone's asking I haven't read mama day so I don't know about that I can't compare them but if anybody I, else I did okay and say one is better than the other one uh mama day it was um, there was some magical realism in that so i don't know i i think they're equal personally i enjoy both of those books yeah then she has another one linden linden hills right linden hills. Mm -hmm. i kind of want to read that one now since it was like mentioned, was mentioned mm -hmm. in this one, yeah. <laughs> yeah um oh i never put that connection so seal for sure but um Miss Eva's granddaughter. Oh, as a grown, wow! Like the granddaughter that was in the house with them when when Maddie first moved in there. That granddaughter that she was raising. I never put that connection that Seal was the granddaughter. But see, for me, Maddie should have been hella old then. If Seal, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. she should have been way older than what she was because that. Seal was a a baby when she moved into yeah right. she's saying yeah that's her grand Miss Eva's granddaughter she should have been hella old then yeah. look everybody's like yes 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 <laughs> yep yep look at all these comments uh, on both sides yep yep that means Maddie should have been hella old in this story if that was the case because she was a grown adult yeah anyways um so mind you these two are in the the room 
arguing about him going, him staying, him lying about where he's going. Meanwhile, the baby is left on the floor with a toy or something like that. And the baby sees a roach come out of the socket in the wall. Okay. Yeah. And the baby's like, oh, I'm so curious. Like, let me crawl over and go play with this night crawler. Right. right. So, um, in the, I can't remember what it was in the book. Was it scissors? Might've been scissors. It was a fork. Okay. Cause I was like in the movie, it was a fork that she picked up or was it scissors? I don't it's think whatever, whatever, soccer. it's fork in the, I can't remember what it was. If it was, I think it was scissors in the movie because it fell off of the table and was just laying there on the ground. So she crawls over to the socket, sticks it in the socket to try to get the bug to come out. And the poor baby a- is done. She's a done, done duck. Um, yeah, it was a fork. But what was it in the movie? Was it scissors or was it a fork as well? Fork in the book. I I said, see, someone said fork in the book, scissors in the movie. I was like, I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't the same thing. Um, Okay. Thank you guys for, see, you guys are so good. You help fill in the gap. So I'm trying to remember the story that was like three books ago. (laughs) Um, Maddie was old when she moved back to Brewster Place. And I think they did in the movie, they like did a little bit of makeup and maybe put a little something under her eyes, but she wasn't like great. Like she wasn't grandma-ish looking. Like she... Looked just like age, like she could have been 10, 15 years older, but she didn't look like I'm a grandma kind of aged. I pictured, so, Vani, you talk, she said, I pictured her in her late 40s. She was young when she had Basil. That's true. Seal and Basil grew up together, so I assume she wasn't that old. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. That threw me threw me off. Well, I guess that, that would make sense, though, because if she runs away, I mean... <laughs> Anna, you want to answer that question on Instagram from from Carmening? Do you guys read a... <laughs> <laughs> For me, yes, I average about a book a week. Anna, you want to answer that question and how many books you read a week? <laughs> um, it just depends on the book. I could read a book in a day. Yeah, she's uh, like, how many how many books have you read so far in 2019? 145. Sips tea. <laughs> 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 Look, I'm looking at my Goodreads as, as my total like read books, and I think I've just hit like 143. Like you've read that in the first half of the year. That's crazy. Kudos to you for that. That's freaking awesome. Um, yeah. So, anyways. The baby sticks the fork, scissors, fork, in the socket and dies. So now she's aborted this baby. The other baby has died and Eugene is gone. So it's like, again, this reoccurring theme of loss that happens to all of these women over and over and over again. Okay, so she's, (laughs) see Sherry, Sherry's on it. She said that um, Maddie was around 51 by the time she gets to Brewster, which would make more sense because then that would be like the other kid. She could have, Seal could have been 20 or something, you know, in her 20s. Yeah, she really is my reading Shiro for real. I wish, like, she's the perfect person for publishers who send books because meanwhile, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll get to that book maybe next year or something <laughs> like that. And Anna's like, okay, I'll just read it, you know, a day before it's about to come out, give my review and call it a day. And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had more time on my hands. Um, <laughs> hey, Courtney, I just saw her pop on. Um, so anyways, that's that's Seal's kind of story. And after she loses that, everything, um, after the funeral, she's kind of like, I'm out. I need to take a break from Brewster Place. And she kind of disappears after that for a little for a spell. Um, Cora Lee. Yep. So I'm looking at this. She grew up with as a strange child with an obsession with dolls. Yep, she loves babies. She collected them until the age of 13. Um, the obsession then turned into Cora having six children. Why? I mean, I remember this in the movie, but I don't remember like the I literally wrote these notes, but I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember this obsession. Oh, yeah, because her dad would buy her a doll like every holiday. And then he was like, I'm not buying any more dolls. 
Right. Yeah. Um, but that obsession turned into her having six kids, majority with different fathers. Um, she wasn't that loving of a mother. Um, yeah. The Not kids could kid just, kid yeah, they run wild. Um, Sherry said, I'm in my 11th book this year. Not a fast reader. I'm not a fast reader either. E -book, I mean, audiobooks definitely help with that. I'm not um, that fast either, guys. Like, <laughs> people think I read fast, but I'm not. Like, I'm lucky where I work. Uh, I work in IT, so if cases don't come through, I really don't have anything to do. Yeah. So I'd rather not sit on social media, so I usually have two or three books with me, and I just repeat. That's smart. So, do you watch much TV? No. See, that's, that's my problem. See, I'm... I don't have free time during the day, not much um, at work. And then, of course, after school, I'm running around with the twins either at practices. So by the time I get home at 9 o'clock, I'm exhausted and don't want to do anything. But then um, I just lost my train of thought. I was about to say something about my reading. But um, anyways, I just, I'm just i an extremely slow reader, and it's hard for me to find time to actually read. Um, yeah. So anyways... But back to Coralie, um, her kids were just, like, reckless. Okay, so did anybody notice that in the movie, for those of you that have seen it, that one of the kids was Lorenz Tate? <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> As a, like, little boy. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. I was like, oh, that's Lorenz Tate. Um, but anyways, then she kind of, like, ignores her kids. She just wants to watch her soap operas. You know, she can't be bothered with them. They're running amok around Brewster Place. People are getting pissed off. Like, come control your kids. Um, and so Kiswana invites them to her boyfriend's play. And her boyfriend is Leon in the movie, by the way. Um, yeah. So Robin Givens, her boyfriend is Leon. Um, so they invite... She's invited to the play. The mom's extremely hesitant because she's like, I don't know how I'm going to dress my kids. Like, I don't have any clothes for them. Um, she's just, like, frantic. I don't know if I can go. She's kind of embarrassed. Um, but she ends up being convinced to go. And the kids have the best time. Like, literally just glued to the play. It's the best thing ever. They just thoroughly enjoy um, being at the play. And I think the mom was kind of thankful that she got convinced to take them because they truly had the best time. Um, and you see after that, that Cora kind of softens her heart a little bit towards them, um, like an effort to be a better mom. Um, oh, yeah. And then she arrives home, and then there's a man waiting for her in her bed. So it's like, okay, here we go again. <laughs> Yeah. Creature of old habit. It's like you're going to turn a new leaf. Yeah, not really. Let's see. I know people in real life who love the idea of having babies but haven't thought much about what it means to have kids that grow up and need structure slash discipline. Yeah. Yeah, that's – it's tough. Like, it's it's truly tough to raise kids. I can't say that enough. So, yeah, it's like you lay down with these dudes, but it's like, okay, now what happens afterwards, especially when they're not in the picture to help you – take care of these kids um right. i was laughing the other day because someone made a comment about like not having kids like this is why i can't have kids because if i if i had kids i wouldn't be able to sit at home and watch game of thrones and hunt in the hunger games all day like the movies and i was like really people can't do that with kids like <laughs> what are you raising over the, you know and i think it's just because it was her niece and nephew or whatever but i'm like Psh, my kids know my door is closed do not disturb. That's like, that's it. It's a wrap. Don't, don't come <laughs> and talk to me. Like, this is me time. You got to set those boundaries. Um, Coralie. I mean, one, it's a thing where it's somebody else's kid and they're going all crazy. Then when it's yours, when it's yours, you train them from birth. So. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Discipline. I never I, understood when people said that. I'm glad I don't want kids because. Well, you don't want somebody else's kids. So right. It's totally own. different. Like, I yeah. can't chastise your child and, and tell right. them what to do, but I sure as hell can tell mine <laughs> what yeah. they need to do. So, yeah, completely different. Um, Coralie can't imagine the babies getting older. In some strange way, she wants them to remain like the dolls. Man, Sherry, you are spot on with your commentary. Like when she was, like the dolls when she was a little girl. She loves the novelty of babies. Yeah. Uh -huh. Spot on with your commentary, Sherry. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, 
yeah. She she was definitely an interesting one. Um, and then make sure we have time. The two. Okay, so these this is one of my favorite stories. Um, the old lady who I don't even know what the old lady's name was. Like the neighbor that was like so against them. Did they mention her name? Um, I can't remember. But basically, she was Sophia? like, say it again. Sophia. I think that sounds familiar. Yeah. Um. Watches her every move. Yeah. And basically, it's like there's something about these two. Yeah. They ain't right. Like, you know, she just couldn't accept the fact that maybe Sophie, somebody said, yeah, I just said, Miss Sophie. Um, they couldn't accept the fact that these possibly could just be two women that are rooming together. Like, what's wrong with that? I mean, Maddie had um, Etta staying in her house, like, you know, but for some reason she was just like, no, I don't trust these two. They're bringing this evil into, you know, Brewster Place and this and that. And it's like, Lorraine's like, what What have we ever done to you? Like, we've done nothing. We we don't... She didn't even say that they were, like, a lesbian couple. She was just like, what have we done to you besides greet you, come in every day, be nice to you, and here you are just being an asshole to us every day. Right. Yeah, they were that way. That's what she said. Yeah, that's how she would say it was like they were that way. Um, and so, you know, they go through this battle every day where the neighbor's just kind of watching them. You know, Lorraine tries to go to um, one of Kiswana's um, meetings, right, with the, um, the with Brewster, the, the people of Brewster the Place that live there. Yeah, the tenants. And basically she's like, well, nobody else wants to be, you know, take notes. I'll, I'll be the secretary and take notes. And of course, then she has, you know, Miss Sophie has a problem with that. Like, who do you think you are kind of thing? And she's like, you know what? I'm out. Like, I'm out. Yeah. So she's trying, she's trying so hard to fit in and be kind to these people and be accepted. And it's just like, some of them will, some of them won't. But I appreciated Ben, who is the, the Mr. Fix It around the building. Um, he's the handyman who works in the building and, and fixes all of their stuff. But I, I kind of really, really... I guess they've only just described Ben as being a lonely man and kind of just drinking all of the time. But that I felt something for him when he stood up for her, you know, and he kind of kind of stood up for Lorraine and was like, well, you know, I forget what he said, but he basically like he had this genius comeback um, to her and kind of shut her up Um but yeah, it was, I really had a great appreciation for Ben and that's kind of where Lorraine and Ben's friendship kind of started because she, Teresa didn't want to hear it. Teresa's just like, whatever. I don't know why you care so much about these people. You care so much about what people think. This is now like the third place that we've moved to because of people's opinions and what they think of us. And she's like, I'm not doing it anymore. So like, stop caring about what these people think about you because I, I don't. So she just basically didn't want to hear it, whereas Ben was someone that she could really open up to and talk to, which, and vice versa. Ben never really, I mean, he knew the tenants and stuff like that, but not on a level to be able to open up and and share his life with. Right. I couldn't recall if they portrayed him as a drunk and his, in, and his backstory That's in the so. movie. I can't remember his backstory, but they definitely portrayed him as a drunk. Um, yeah, he was definitely still a drunk in the thing. So I love Kiswana because she sees no wrong in pretty much everybody. She accepts everybody and kind of tries to bring the people of Brewster Place together. Um, and she has a moment where she's outside talking to Lorraine and then you have, what's his name? Cece, who comes up, the gang member who pretty much owns that alley um and is basically talking shit to Lorraine and or Kiswana first and then Lorraine's laughing and he's like basically like what you laughing at and then he goes in on the fact that she's a lesbian and um oh I did love that line somebody just brought back um when so or so yes Ben said I guess you shower fully clothed because she was basically trying to tell the story of 
what wrongdoing she had seen Lorraine or something and Teresa doing. And she's like, I got out of the shower and she gave me a towel or something like that. And everybody was like, okay, what's your point? Like you saw her naked. Like what? <laughs> she still wasn't doing anything other than being naked in her own home, you know? And so, yeah, he said, I guess you shower fully clothed. And everybody thought that that was just hilarious. Um, but anyways, so she was out, side and cc was like pissed that this lesbian is like laughing at him you know in front of his boys like he's trying to be hard and he's just he's getting pissed off you know and so he's like about to fight her really he wants to like do something to her and everybody's like man just cool it like just leave her alone and let her be or whatever but he's still pissed like he's you knew that he just wasn't gonna let that go so Lorraine um, goes back upstairs to Teresa. She's like, all right, whatever. Let's go to this party we're supposed to go to. Teresa's like, nah, I don't feel like it. Like, I'm not going. So Lorraine goes to the party because she's considered a buzzkill. So she's trying to prove the world wrong that, hey, I can go to this party and be have a good time. And at that point, um, she decides to cut out and leave the party early because she's over it. And she comes back, but she's not ready to face Teresa and explain why she's come home so early. So she's like, you know what? Let me go visit Ben. Let me go visit him and see what he's up to and just, you know, have a late night chat or whatever. But she doesn't want to go in the front of the building because she doesn't want Teresa to see her walking into the building. So where does she go? She decides to go up into the alley. So <laughs> she goes into this alley and lo and behold, Cece and his boys are in the alley. Um, this part broke my heart. I mean, they beat her up, gang raped her, left her for dead. She's pretty much there until morning. Um, I think Ben finds her in the morning and sees her. And she ends up just, she, she really is like disoriented. She doesn't know where she is, who's who, what, what. All she knows is that plenty of men laid hands on her. She doesn't know who it was. They raped her, beat her to a pulp. And she just, I don't know, she take like a board, a wooden board or something. What does she, she ends up beating, basically beating Ben to death because she's so disoriented. She doesn't even know what she's doing. And she ends up beating him. And it's so sad because it's like your one friend, the one person that was there for you. And he's trying to help you because he sees that you've been endangered. And it's like, she took him out. I, I wasn't expecting that at all. Like not Ben. I didn't expect the rape I could kind of see because she had pissed off CC um, right. unintentionally. I could see that he right. just wasn't over it. So I expected that. But man, when she took out Ben, I was like heartbroken. Was one of the toughest scenes I've ever read. Painfully descriptive. Yeah. Horrible scene. I was so thrown off by her killing Ben. Yeah. Brick. It was a brick in the book. Thought it was interesting that Teresa lost her desire to go to the party because she heard Cece making fun of Lorraine. She was the one telling Lorraine not to worry about people. Exactly. So it's like, you're being a hypocrite now. You told me not to worry about it. And here you are being upset because you didn't have a backbone to stand up, you know? Yeah, it was a brick. Yes, it was a brick. And then his blood sp splattered all over the bricks, which becomes a thing in the book because they want to remove all the bloody bricks. So it's like, right. so after that, they have like this, what do they call it? The block, the street party, what is it? Um, the block party. So they have the block party. Everybody's out there. Old characters are coming back. Seal comes back. Um, and they're just so hurt over the loss of Ben. And Maddie sees his blood on these bricks and is like, I'm getting these bricks the hell out of here. So they're all like in the rain, chiseling at these bricks. And one by one, they're carrying them down the street out of the way. And the whole entire um, community like pitches in and starts removing these bricks and just kind of removing the, the, the bad, the memory of it away. But it's kind of nice to see them come together um, at the block party and just be one as Brewster plays to kind of come together. Um, yes, yeah, so unexpected. Ben was her friend, hate that it never told her what happened to her afterwards. Yeah, there's a lot of characters I would have liked to have known what happened to them um, after the fact. But yeah, 
So that is the women of Rooster Place. Um, wasn't expecting that ending whatsoever. I mean, we had our highs and lows, but again, there was just so much loss. Like these women literally bonded over the loss, the losses that they had. I'm just curious of why Gloria wrote. Hold on, like Jamie. Because... Did you see that last comment? So in the book, it was a dream, right? I don't think that it was. Are you talking about Ben? What what part are you talking about it being a dream? Anyways, I want to finish what you were saying. Um, I just, so many books we read it, you want, like, women empowerment and women to, like, you know, stand up and do their thing and don't let, I don't know, I don't want to say it was negative, but there's so much pain in this book, so much sorrow, and it's just like, when did they catch a break? Right. But then when you think about it. A lot of black people, we don't catch a break. Right. <laughs> this is like day in and day out for us. So it's like, yep. I just, I don't know. Yeah, it's our reality, sadly. You know, it's a, it's a reality for a lot of women trying to come up. And, you know, as black women, we're always at the bottom of the totem pole. So, um, yeah, it was a, a story about women bonding through loss, which a lot of us at some point in our lives have experienced, sadly. Um let me see the bricks out of the wall in the rain because Maddie woke up in a sweat and then it was the day of the block party. I don't recall that. I mean, I could be totally off, but I thought that the block party happened. That was the last, the closing scene, yeah, them taking the bricks out of the wall and then passing them down the street. And then they're all kind of just hugging like at the end of the movie. That's how it ended. I don't remember it being a dream. <laughs> yeah. Reread and we'll discuss. Any final thoughts for everybody? I know Instagram will probably cut us off in like three minutes if we don't wrap this up because they only like us to go for an hour. An hour. Um, but uh, in the meantime, if you guys want to drop your comments and final thoughts about the book, would love to hear that. Definitely check out the movie. The cast was great. If you can get through the grainy, it's really not that bad, I promise. Um, but it is actually a good one to watch. Oh, Seal had a dream about Ben. Yes, Vani, you're correct. She did. And it was kind of like a flash that it was like the same thing that she dreamt was really, really what kind of happened to him. Like he died. Yes. That's why she came back. Maybe the brick wall was black women being shut off from getting ahead in life. Yep, there was a significance about the wall being there. The way Naylor described Seal's pain coming out after the funeral was bone chilling. Yeah, that it was. That was so sad. I just, I think that was the worst. Well, her and Maddie, Maddie's son Basil. I think those two stories for me were the ones that hit the most. Um, yeah, so sad. I enjoyed it, though. I think I gave it five stars. I did, too. I wasn't sure what to expect with this, and you know, which makes me want to read more classics because there's so many hidden gems, um, which I'm doing more of this year, is incorporating um, more old school stuff because it's like we're missing out on some good stuff. Right. Um, excited to read Fly Girl, too. So, so oh, many I'm people can you. stop hating on us for not, <laughs> not having read that. I know. Um, but anyways, I do want to thank you, Anna, for coming on here and chatting with us tonight. Um, it was fun for our two groups to read this, so I'm happy that you were able to come on. For those of you who don't know, our book for this month is Terry McMillan's Waiting to Exhale. So I am a huge fan of the movie, never read the book. I've heard the book is way better, so I'm so excited to read this one. Um, yeah, yeah. Brewster Place was definitely a five-star read for me. Yeah, I do want to read more. I think I want to read Linden Hills um, because it was mentioned. But I need to go back and, and see. Was this her first book? Do we know? I think Mama Day was. Okay, so maybe I need to go back and read that first before I go back and it's read. Finished. It was very close. Very close. Just finished it. It was very close. I never enjoyed a depressing book so much. I know. I was completely sucked in in the, the trauma and loss of these women. So... Well, thank y'all for coming on with us tonight. Um, y'all make an hour go by super duper fast. And I know Instagram is going to cut us off in like five seconds. So yes. um, my mom recommended Linden Hills. Definitely going to add that to the list. 
who knows maybe Anna and I will partner and, and read another one of her books together at some point if not this year maybe next year um, we know we got we have another partner I think coming up later the winter December I think yes but um, who knows what can happen in between then <laughs> <laughs> thanks for keeping us reading thanks for reading with me y'all encourage me I love y'all to death and with that being said, I think we're going to say goodnight. All right, Instagram cut me off. See, I knew that was going to happen. Um, but thank y'all for joining us. Loved having you on here. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.